stay If you win it Comes and goes in a minute Where's the real stuff in life To cling to Love Hello everyone and welcome to the Boomer Pod podcast where we interview movie and TV celebrities. Our guest today is stunt performer, Mr. Mike Martinez. Welcome, Mike, and thank you for being with us today on the Boomer Pod. Oh, thanks for having me. (laughs) Let's talk about your career, Mike, in stunt performing and coordinating. How did you get started in each one of these roles? Well, what happened was when I was a kid, and I was about five or six years old, found out what a stunt person was. It didn't make sense to me, you know, there's still people, so how come they're doing this stuff and not getting hurt besides uh, the actors doing it? And I'm kind of nosy by nature, so that just always kind of stuck with me. And it wasn't like today where they have a lot of making ofs and behind the scenes and things like that, but I followed it as much as I could as I was growing up. Fast forward about 20 years, I was working as a warehouseman and we were doing that thing at lunchtime. You know, what would you do if you weren't doing this? You know, what would be your dream job? And some people wanted to be a baseball player or, you know, one guy uh, wanted to be a merchant marine. And it came to me and I said, I'd be a stunt guy. And that was the first time I said it out loud to myself. And I thought, well, I was always a jock in school, so I might as well see what's involved and how to go about it. And, you know, things worked out. (laughs) Now, you said you worked in a warehouse. What other career paths did you try before getting into film? That was about the only thing. I mean, when I was younger, about 17 to I was 20, I worked as a gas station. And then I got a job as a warehouseman, became a teamster, and I worked there for 13 years before I ended up leaving to do stunts full time. That was back in 1987. Okay. No, no, eight, that was back in 1985. <laughs> okay, going back a ways. Tell, yeah. us, tell us about some of your TV and movies. How about Killer Clowns from Outer Space? That's actually, that's the one I took a leave of absence from my day job. Come to think of it was 87. I took a leave of absence from my day job to work on Killer Clowns. And right after that, the guy who was the assistant director in Killer Clowns was going to be the production manager of a movie shooting in Georgia. And I got offered to work on that. And basically, I just never went back to my day job from there. And Killer Clowns, Killer Clowns was a fun movie. You know, I got to play. I kind of became the main stunt bozo in the on the show, doubling, doing the stunts for a lot of the clowns, and and that when Killer Clowns, I'm I'm still involved with it now because it ended up getting a cult following, and I get asked to go to conventions to sign autographs, talk to people, do photo ops, things like that. <laughs> Is there a game based on it as well? Yeah, they just came out with a game uh, based on the movie just recently. Are you into horror films? I've been in horror films. <laughs> yeah, I like I like horror films. I like Killer Clowns because it's it's not gory at all. You know, some of our biggest fans are kids. You know, ten year old kids. Uh, all the kills are done in kind of a comical way. It has a circus theme to the whole thing. People get wrapped up in cotton candy cocoons and turn into get cop captured in giant balloons, things like that. I still get together with the uh, some of the cast and a couple of the other guys who were the clowns. We go to the conventions together and just it, it's fun seeing everybody again. Let's move forward to 2003. The Matrix Reloaded with Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss. That was an amazing series. What can you tell us about it? That one, I worked on Reloaded. I was one of the driving coordinators. I I coordinated the precision driving team for the freeway chase that they worked on. I ended up working as the coordinator for the, during the first unit shooting, 
And then they did another second unit shooting and the second unit director asked me if I would stay on for what he still had to do. So initially when I got hired, I had to sign a thing saying that I would work the full six weeks of the shoot. But then the second unit director asked if I would stick around for second unit. So I ended up basically I ended up working for about three months uh, on the matrix. I was also the stunt coordinator for the game Enter the Matrix that was shooting at the same time. What can you tell us about working with Keanu? Actually, that's the second time I worked with Keanu. Um, I worked with him on um, a TV movie called The Brotherhood of Justice way early in his career uh, and then uh, on The Matrix. And I, I didn't, you know, being the driving coordinator I didn't get to work one on one with Keanu. I mean, you know, I said hi to him and everything like that, but I didn't get a chance to actually work with him because he was busy doing rehearsals for the fights with the, all the Agent Smiths that were that he had to fight during that show. If he wasn't filming, he was rehearsing. <laughs> and how about San Andreas in 2015 with mm -hmm. Dwayne? Johnson, I think you said they said you were a stunt rigger on that. Is that right? Yeah, we. I was one of the riggers for when he parachuted into AT and T. We had him on a flying rig, and uh, he was he was a great guy, really funny, really appreciative, yeah. big guy. <laughs> really, really. How about TV's Nash Bridges with Don Johnson? I did a lot of the Nash Bridges show when they were filming out here. I usually ended up playing either the bodyguard or uh, either the bad guy or the bad guy's bodyguard uh, during the season when uh, they came back to make uh, do a recap of it a couple of years ago. Uh, I got to work on that also as uh, one of the stunt coordinators on the show. What do you consider your greatest accomplishments, Mike? I, I kind of made a name for myself as a stunt driver. And from there, a lot of my work not was, wasn't just in films, but uh, I ended up doing a lot of work driving in car commercials, things like that. And uh, that, that kept me quite busy. Biggest accomplishment, I guess I've been working at this for over 45 years and I'm still going. <laughs> That's great. That's great. And how about challenges, both initial and current? Well, I'm, I'm, you okay. You know, I, I, yeah. I, somebody was heard me in here and was talking. I'm in the, I'm in, I'm in the barn. We're having a heat wave out here and this is the coolest spot, <laughs> yeah. but there was the challenges are, you know, being in, older stunt guy, you know, so some things have caught up with me. I've had, I have scar tissue in my shoulders and neck and things like that from years of abuse. But other than that, I get along pretty well. You know, I've never broken a bone in my life. So I figure I'm, I'm doing okay there too. That's good. That's great. Very unusual for your profession. Where do you hope to be in the next five years, Mike? Well, I'm, Kind of hoping to still be doing what I'm doing. I'm mostly retired now. I'm 70 years old now. And, wow. and so I, I still get called to do work in auto shows. The new, when they had the, the new cars for the dealer shows, I do shows for Toyota, Chevy, GMC, things like that. And we drive the new cars on stage and cars look pretty. And then I go to the horror conventions once in a while. And so that keeps me, it keeps me busy enough and I don't even have to get myself beat up anymore. <laughs> what can you tell us about your heritage, Mike? Oh, well, I'm an Apache, Native American, and I'm part of the Chiricahua Apache. My people were called the Xi'an. And what that means is it's, it's kind of translates as red people because they're from, from New Mexico where there's the red earth and they used to use the red mud to protect themselves from the heat of the sun and also rub it on their clothes for camouflage. They can go into the mountains and just disappear 
<laughs> and how about your family? What can you tell us about them? Well, I have two kids. The, they're in their 40s now. You know, they got to see me when, when I first started. They used to go to the, the park where I used to do the Wild West stunt shows back in the late 70s. And every once in a while, my daughter would be yelling from the audience when a guy was sneaking up on me. <laughs> but neither one of them are. Well, my son has done some stunt work. I brought him in for some fight scenes and things like that. But he has his own. He's a manager of a company, you know, so he just, when he can, he'll just come in and get in on a fight scene or something like that. <laughs> now, are there many Native Americans in the business, in the stunt business? There's uh, a handful. The main one I can think of is Branscombe Richmond, who was the, the big Native guy in the old, what is that, Knight Rider TV series. You know, I've worked with Brand, Branscombe before, and we... You know, there's more native actors than stunt guys. Of course, there's a lot of people who consider themselves Mexican or Hispanic rather than Native American. You know, native people, we kind of have a joke. A Mexican is just a confused Indian. <laughs> uh, now how about the coordinating end of it? Are you going to do more of that now that you're close to retirement? Yeah, I've been coordinating for quite a while, and that's coordinating is always interesting. Matter of fact, I ended up just within this last month, I was one of the stunt coordinators for a film that uh, was being shot out here uh, that we still have to finish up a couple of shots. The, the star of the show sprained her ankle, and so they had to take a hiatus. So we're going to be getting back mid-July mid just to do a couple of more shots that they needed. And how would you like to be remembered, Mike? Oh, boy. I don't know. Just a guy who, who could get the job done, you know, pleasant to be around. And yeah, that's about all, all I could ask for. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. What have I missed? Anything that you'd like to mention or pitch? Oh, well, there's the Killer Clowns game that's coming out. And I don't really have anything to do with that unless somebody wants me to sign their sign the game for them but i just recently worked with steph curry on a mockumentary he's doing about about his life where uh, i got asked to play a, a mascot that has to get beat up i just did that a couple of days ago so that's coming out in the future <laughs> now it's about it at seven years old, you're still still getting beat up. Yep. <laughs> That's well, because they they asked me to do it because it was a big you know it's a, it's a mascot, so it's a big costume. And like I mentioned, I was in Killer Clowns. I've also played a gargoyle before. I've also played a gorilla, a realistic gorilla. And uh, so I'm used to I'm just used to working in big costumes because you have to you have to know how to make yourself be bigger then the costume otherwise movements won't show and things like that so that's why they asked me to do it and i had fun <laughs> do you do any comic-con we well the horror conventions they haven't we haven't hit comic-con yet almost but we just do the different specifically horror horror conventions we have one coming up in september called uh, terror con in uh, massachusetts and then another one in October, I forget the name of that one in Pennsylvania. So, you know, they just, we just travel all over for that. I also have car shows coming up for Chevy and Toyota and things like that. So, you know, I just managed to be mostly retired, but still keep myself busy. <laughs> Now, what do you do in the car shows? Is it just on stage or is there, is there any film involved? Mostly just on stage. We're off in the wings and then we drive the cars out onto the stage, onto a turntable. You know, they make the car look pretty and then we drive off stage, sometimes get into another car, you know, for uh, a different, uh, to show a different vehicle, things like that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thanks, man. But they, you know, but sometimes they do film what we're driving because we did like I drove when they introduced the 2020 Corvette and that one, they filmed us while we were doing the approach so they could show it on the big screen 
for the live show. So sometimes, you know, mostly it's just driving live, but they sometimes they do film film us while we're that for something that they want to show during the live presentation. And what do you drive as a personal car? I have a 1993 GMC Sierra four wheel drive. Wow. Yeah, I live well. You know, it it it's been really well taken care of. I got it from a guy who bought it new as a retirement gift for himself and he hardly drove it and uh then COVID hit and it was parked for like three years and he just wanted to get rid of it so when i bought it it was a 93 but it only had about ninety thousand miles on it it still got a long ways to go the interior is still immaculate and everything it's a four-wheel drive so since i live on a ranch that comes in handy <laughs> Now, what do you do on the ranch? We just, it's, ranch? it's a horse ranch. It's its a horse ranch. There's no horses because we have a small water table here and they can't support, there's not enough water to support having any kind of livestock. But I basically, I grow peppers, hot peppers and make hot sauces in my spare time, things like that. And where is this, Mike? It's in Half Moon Bay in California. I and live on, I live on where that is yeah it's about about 60 miles south of san francisco i'm about two miles from the ocean great that's terrific yeah. will you join us again in the future to share any updates in your career absolutely if you want i'll give you a call be well mike and thank All you right. thank you for this gripping conversation all right thanks a lot larry bye-bye Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye. take care and you will be happy too.